All right, so you know you have your favorite host here. Sorry, Dad. I'll grab the rim of the net and go. <laughs> <laughs> Got the air on the neck. These chicken breasts won't help. Are you done yet? <laughs> okay, here is the back koi pond, and with it being winter time, it's really getting you know clear. I'm not feeding no more, so we stopped all the feeding, and you can see clear through the bottom. You can even see the caves in the one corner, and the sound of that waterfall. I love it. Okay, here's some of the, the koi. They like to hide on the very bottom. There's some leaves down there, and they, they like to just gather together and go into the leaves and just hang out. They, they, they're already in the room dormant, and they are, uh, you know, sitting there and just hanging out. Sorry about the beeping on the phone, guys. And uh, over here, we'll run into the cave in the corner. Oh, oh look, there's the, the paddlefish. Let me go back up. There's the smallest paddlefish there. That's the whole cave system in the corner there. See how it was bigger than all the rest of the ledges? And let me see. There's more koi over here. There's another. Was that a paddlefish? I can't see with this glare on here. Let's go on over across to the back pond. Go across here. You can see where I have my little driveway where I drive the bobcat through uh, the, the river and over to here. Now here's the pond set up. Oh, let's move over here. Go over to these trees. We'll start on this far end. All right, let me get this turned around here. Now remember, this pond here is eight foot deep, and this side here is about, I'd say, 20 foot wide. It looks really small, and then it gets skinny, because that beam that's going across there, that is 15 foot long. So that's probably 25 foot wide on this side. And then it gets skinny here. Oh, the water's running slower. i got to clean that filter again. And then over to here, now this gets 30 foot wide. Now, all these koi are in there down the bottom, and you can start seeing them by the edges over here because they, they're really packed in on this side. Start see, see them through the water. You can see the koi there. There they are. They're everywhere under there. Let me turn here. Some over here. There's more there. But they like to stay deeper normally, so we don't see them until this water gets clear. There's our old waterfall. We gotta really work this summer and get that up and going, make it look nice. I've got a bunch of rocks there for it, right next to the deer. Um, we'll go up the hill here and see. We didn't even do anything with the leaves on this hillside, but up here, go into the very back of the yard. My yard starts right at the back of that gray barn right there at the top of the hill. So let me turn through here. There we go, and then turn there. So now this is one side. And then it comes over and goes through the center of this tree here on the left. And look at this. That guy made so much complaints about the tree branches. And I told him, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll clear up the tree, but clean up all these logs and junk and debris back here. And he still hasn't done it. But, you know, I'm not one to call the city, so just live with it. Come past over here. Oh, there's the swing. Watch that rope. There we go. And then here's a little river between. That's not a river, it's a creek, but it's between our yards, or I'm sorry, my high yard, my low yard. There we go. And it's usually about a foot deep. And it's about four foot wide. And there's always creek chubs in there and all kinds of stuff. And here you can see where I've Buried some pieces of cement sidewalk so that I can drive across without sinking into the mud. And then let's go back over here to the pond. Oh, 
Oh, there's some paddlefish right in the middle right there. Yeah, big ones. Oh, there I am. <laughs> Say hi, Rich. <laughs> hi. <laughs> okay, I'm going inside and I'm going to use the camera from the drone. Let's see if it gives us any good kind of... It's a 4K camera too. But it's... Oh, wow, it really shows the Shakoi babies. Normal size on them are about 6 inches. They always look smaller on camera for some reason. But let's move over here. Look at the pool. Oh, here's the bass. There's the big Tamensis on top. But you see, it looks really dark. It's not a very good camera for this, is it? Works great outdoors, but not so much indoors. Let's go try it on a lighted up tank. Here's our Frontosa. See how the big one's hiding in the back? Alright, we've about got that tank empty, and now here is the sturgeon. This tank's lit up a lot nicer, so the camera should work better. But it's nice and crisp looking. There's our randas and our fancy tails. There's the high fin bandit charts, and there, look at that koi right there. Some regular comments. It's a nice tank, I like it, but we're going to move all of these goldfish out of here because the sturgeon's going after them. So, we always got problems. Okay, these are all the fish that came in yesterday, along with some Josh has already picked out. We're taking all these glass cats and all the painted tetras uh, and the coolie loaches and probably the anything bright and white. We've got to catch um, all, those, all those white ones that we're going to put up in the front tank because there's nothing but dark fish up there. So he's going to catch some more yet, and then uh, Reaper's going to take what whatever's left, and uh, I guess Josh is putting the elephant nose in with the discus. Let me see where they are, because we can't just put them in any tank. The elephant nose will eat uh, the bloodworms and stuff, and we feed the discus bloodworms, so they'll eat that. But if I put them in, like say, with the uh, angels. They never get bloodworms, so they get fed, you know, the flake food. Then the elephant nose won't grow. It won't do good. So these guys here, they'll do good with. And of course, they're not aggressive. They won't bother him at all. They'll do fine. Okay, Josh, he's hard at work catching these. I know he's surgically attached to his phone in his left hand, but you can't put that down, son. I just uh -huh. say it. <laughs> Handling business at the same time. <laughs> We've got a surprise coming, and I'll let Josh tell you about it on his videos coming up. Uh, yeah, I can't really say nothing about it, otherwise I'll spoil it. Let's watch Josh catch these fish. I want that white skirt tetra there. How's that saying go? You gotta be quicker than that. <laughs> yeah, you got the coolie loaches and the tetra yet. Hey, you got a tiny fish and a big old thing. <laughs> but we're supposed to have, what did you call yourself? The uh, You and Matt were arguing? The ultimate, fish ultimate keeper. Ultimate keeper. Yeah. Uh, with netting skills. Uh, what else do you want to hear? Anything bright. That little... Uh, I think it's a Danio in front of you, right in the middle. I don't know. Whatever the, the bright fish is down there, I can't see. The coolie loaches. The glass cats. Hmm. This is a dojo loach, I think. It's small. Well, he can go in there too. And yes, there is a a cichlid up here. He got brought over in when we were siphoning water in. 
through that hose right there, he ended up over here, the baby. So we gotta catch him and put him back over here. That's it, besides the uh, shrimp and the elephant elephant. What's right above the, the white thing right there? Or is that a reflection? I see another. A little white grommy. Oh, the, the miniature grommy? Yeah, catch him. He's a dwarf grommy. I couldn't tell if that was a reflection or... Alright, the rest... Uh... Oh, if you can get that little neon in the bottom. It's a single neon right in the middle. Oh, look who I'm talking to. If he can get it. <laughs> there was an uh, albino uh, pleco in there. Bristol nose pleco? No. Nope. Supposed to be. There was two bristle nose plecos. One was supposed to be bigger, and the smaller one was the albino. There's two in here, but they're both regular. Hmm. Is that a coolie loach in the right corner? No. Nope. See, from here, that looks like a saltwater remora to me. <laughs> That's how bad my eyesight is. Yeah, no, we it. Alrighty. And we'll carry these up and acclimate them to the front tank. Give me the longest acclimator there. Oh, are you going to do it? I can't do it. I can do other stuff. Okay. Now. We'll come through here. Look how pretty. I don't see you out much. Nice. All right, let's take this in the house. Yeah. Get you a little look see in the pool pond. Hi, Bertas. All right. We'll go up to the house now. Okay. Here we are here. And see why I wanted the albino gibbiceps? It's so dark. And there's the black-haired algae. It's letting the plants grow, though, which it wasn't before, except for this. See, that's what it was doing to all the plants before. Now, the way I got rid of that was I snapped off a bunch of leaves and let the new leaves grow and cut off the old ones. And uh, I can take this whole piece of wood out, clean it off, and the same thing with this piece of wood here. It mostly grows on the wood and gets real thick. But I can do that and clean them three pieces, snap a bunch of leaves off here, and then it'll look like it's pretty much gone. And I can do some peroxide in the water, uh, try and kill the rest. But, you know, I don't really mind it as long as it don't kill the plants like it's doing there. Look at these crypts are growing good. Lots of different fish, but see how they're all darker and gray and all that. A little red fish, I don't know what that is. Oh, look at you. I don't know where you come from. I haven't seen you in there. That guy almost looks like a little Dorado. <laughs> look at <'cause> the tail. <coughs> oh, and there's actually a sword tail in there. couple of them. Hmm. So now we're going to be adding all these to it. But you don't look like much in the bucket, but they spread out. They add a lot of color. And let me back off. There's the whole tank. The water level's low because it's being pumped down to there. i got to fill that back up. But this is the tank right behind the front door. And then the front window. There's the cars, 
Oh, it looks cold out there, but yuck. And then this was our, our Thanksgiving dinner. and Oh, my God, I had to wash all these. That was terrible. I had to take this thing apart and just hand wash everything. Four, six, eight, ten bins, and then all the tops and all the, the things that go across and beside, and then the whole top of this. I had to wash that whole thing out. But it worked great for Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, I come back to uh, see if it was done. And as you can see, I got the floor all wet. I open up the door, I come in here, and Jerry's running with the carpet <laughs> uh, scrubber to suck up water. So I've never seen Jerry move that fast. <laughs> so we lost about two inches out of the 150 gallon. And that got all this carpet here wet. Problem with that is, is this is used Mike Tyson carpet, so it brings out smells that were there from long before. You know, this carpet was five, ten years old before I got it, ten years ago. More than that, probably twelve years ago now. Wild parties. <laughs> Mike Tyson parties. <laughs> Let me vacuum this up and uh, I'll get right back with you. I'm just gonna pour them in. There's more. There's the glass cats. Okay, here comes a bunch of fish. We got them all. Alright. Thank you. Yep. Good job, Jerry. Alright, there's the glass cats. I have practice today. <laughs> More glass cats. Well, suddenly the tank looks kind of full now. No, I don't know. The coolie loaches, you'll never see them. They'll just disappear into the bottom. That pink guy is new. So is that white guy there. And that one. There's that baby. Oh, wait, that's that beta. He's hiding. There he is. Where's that? There it is. So that is a beta. This pink guy is new. That's new. Definitely adds color to the tank. That's all I cared about is brighten it up a little bit. Nice. And there you have it. Now, if you look down the front of this glass, see all the water on it? The water droplets everywhere? I'm going to have to clean all that off yet, because this is covered with water. So, and then I have to fill it up and uh, close the lid. But we did vacuum all this up. So now, the thing is, is we got to leave the door open to get some air over it to help dry it off. It's not cold. It's 57 degrees. And it's a nice little breeze coming through here now. you got more insulation than I do. I guess. <laughs> Jerry says, burr. <laughs> but the carpet will dry up nicely now. We used uh, some carpet cleaner solution after we sucked up all the water and put down so that it don't take three days to dry up and get rid of any smells that was left in there. Now it smells good. So we're good to go. On to the next thing. All right, guys, we finished that tank. Here's a little shrimp tank. They're growing crazy in there. I got this one here pretty well cleaned out of all algae. I got to do some more bleach running through it. Um, them are all just dead snail shells that died off over last year. Um, and uh, a little more bleach, and that should, should go crystal clear like this one. This one's ready for fish, except for, oh, I got to buy uh, gravel to put in there. And I've got an uh, air stone in it. Oh, well, it's not running. Why is this not running? It's on. Oh, hang on a second. Okay, so I tried pulling it up higher, 
and it's, I made sure it's connected and it is running I can feel it vibrating so this pump ain't strong enough to run that at any depth so I got to replace the air pump in it but you know it's nice and clear and uh, it's almost ready for fish I got to cycle it yet uh, that'll be three weeks of adding ammonia every day to cycle it once I get the gravel in it's the same way that this has been running forever you can see the under gravel right there has been flowing up uh, but I've killed all the bacteria out here with adding the bleach to it to get rid of this layered on algae it was so bad but uh, uh, you know uh, it's things I got to keep going and keep doing I still got to get the clock pieces to put in the top here I got to drill the hole and then make that the clock and have the ensemble up and running I like that blue background I want to add a blue background to here what I did here was just add a red curtain behind it so that it's got that red in there but don't like that look so I want to basically tape blue on the back side so it matches that one um, I did use the red which matched in here when it was crystal clear and see-through because I got the red curtains here the red curtains on the door up there and around the door and around the window and everything's black and white well they're nice black tanks and uh, red background but I cannot change that background on there so Thanks for uh, hanging out with us, and uh, I'll keep working, keep getting things done, and, you know, hit that like and subscribe button, and stay fishy, my friends.